Patrick Mackay's life was filled with abuse, even before he was born, as his father would get drunk and assault his mother, kicking her in the stomach while he was in her womb. His father continued to abuse Patrick, causing him to lash out at his classmates. He became a bully, physically attacking other classmates and even small animals. After his father died, Patrick began to spiral out of control. As the new man of the house, he frequently assaulted his mother and sister as he was quick to throw violent tantrums. At the age of 15, Patrick was diagnosed as a psychopath, and the psychiatrist made an eerily accurate prediction that Mackay would grow up to be a cold psychopathic killer. Welcome to History's Biggest Villains. Patrick Mackay was born on September 25, 1952 in Middlesex, England, growing up with his parents and younger sisters in Dartford, Kent. His father, Harold, was an alcoholic who inflicted repeated physical abuse to Patrick and the rest of his family. These beatings deeply affected Patrick as his grades dropped tremendously. He was prone to tantrums and became a bully to his younger classmates. Mackay also engaged in cruelty to animals. He would torture his pets, and on one occasion, he set his tortoise on fire. He would tear the wings off of birds and fondle their dead corpses. And this was where his obsession with death started. When Patrick was 10, his father died from a heart attack while driving to work. His last words to his son were, remember to be good. Mackay struggled to cope with his father's death as he would tell people that his dad was alive, keeping a photo of him with him at all times. His mother asked Patrick not to attend his father's funeral. By the time he was 13, Patrick began to spiral out of control. He set a Catholic church on fire, but he was only given probation. He was committed to a mental hospital for the first time after he trashed the furniture in his home and assaulted his mother and sisters numerous times. Patrick also insisted on having a doll with him in his hospital room. By age 15, Mackay had racked up a long record of violent offenses, including the attempted strangulation of his mother in a near-fatal assault on a younger neighborhood boy. Mackay later said that he would have killed the boy if he wasn't stopped. He also robbed a number of elderly women as well. Mackay was assessed by psychiatrist Leonard Carr and was diagnosed as a psychopath. As Carr predicted, he would grow up to become a cold psychopathic killer. He was released from the asylum a second time against staff recommendations. Moving in with two aunts, in a drug and alcohol induced rage, he later tried to strangle one of the aunts. In 1972, he was released from the hospital for the last time. As Mackay grew into an adult, he became fascinated with Nazism, decorating his bedroom with World War II photos and frequently wearing a stormtrooper's uniform. He would call himself Franklin Bovolt I. He then drifted through London, habitually using drugs and alcohol. Chelsea and Knightsbridge were home to some of the richest Londoners and were full of luxury shops and high-end restaurants. In 1972, there was a massive rise in muggings, robberies, and handbag snatchings in these areas. The attacker targeted old women, befriending them to gain access to their homes, then attacking them before ransacking the place. In 1973, Patrick befriended Father Anthony Crean, a local priest who offered to help him. In return for this kind gesture, Mackay robbed Crean's home, cashing a stolen check and escaping with a 50 pound fine on a theft conviction. This situation drove a wedge in their friendship as Mackay went back to London. On July 9th, Mackay saw 17 year old German Heidi Manilk on a train. He approached her, stabbing her multiple times before opening the door and hurling her body from the train near New Cross. 11 days later, he beat Mary Hines to death in her Kennish Town apartment. On January 12, 1974, Patrick stabbed 57-year-old Stephanie Britton to death, along with her four-year-old grandson. A few days later, he tossed a homeless man from the Hungerford Bridge into the Thames River. On Valentine's Day 1974, he broke into the home of 84-year-old Isabella Griffith, where he beat and strangled her to death before plunging a kitchen knife in her stomach. The police failed to connect all of these murders, so Patrick was free to continue. Mackay was living with friends in Finchley, North London, proclaiming that he was possessed by demons. After he was kicked out of the house for his bizarre activities, he tried to rob the place out of spite and got six months in jail for burglary. By his release, he continued to snatch purses and attack the elderly. On June 13, 1974, Mackay bludgeoned 62-year-old Frank Goodman to death with a lead pipe following a dispute over cigarettes. On December 23rd, he broke into the apartment of 92-year-old Sarah Rodmel in Hackney. He nailed the back door shut and shoved stockings into the woman's mouth before beating her to death on her doorstep. 
asset. He stole her 10 pound Christmas bonus, later confessing that killing her was as easy as washing my socks. In February 1975 in South End, Mackay killed 48 year old cafe owner Ivy Davies with a lead pipe. Since he had gotten away with so many murders, his thirst to kill was insatiable. The next month, he had befriended Adele Price, an elderly woman who lived in Chelsea. He entered her apartment by asking for a glass of water. He then strangled her and after he left the scene, he walked past her granddaughter who was coming home. The police were becoming increasingly concerned that the numerous robberies and murders were linked, but they were nowhere close to finding their suspect. Eleven days after Price's murder, having still harbored a grudge against Father Crean from two years earlier, Mackay evaded his house in Shorn Kent. He attacked Father Crean with an axe splitting his skull open and leaving his brain exposed. He then put Crane's body in the bathtub, running the water as he watched his victim die. Mackay then stabbed him repeatedly to finish him off. He then left his victim's lifeless body in the bathtub full of bloody water. After this murder, Mackay was seen in the area by multiple witnesses acting strangely. When the police were called to the crime scene after a nun discovered the body, they remembered an incident with Father Crane involving Patrick Mackay, where he befriended the priest only to rob his house and steal money. Two days later, Mackay was arrested and he quickly admitted to killing Father Crean. Once he was arrested, his fingerprints were taken and they matched prints found at the scene of Adele Price's murder. Police also found the proceeds of his numerous robberies in his apartment, including jewelry and silver fountain pen. He also took police to a location where he threw a knife that he used in his murder spree. Upon further investigation, Mackay was a prime suspect in several other unsolved crimes in London. At first, he confessed to the murders of Anthony Crean, Isabella Griffith, and Adele Price. While he was on remand at HMB Brixton, other prisoners told detectives that he had killed six more people that were unknown to police. The police checked the details and found information that actually linked Mackay to eight more murders. They found evidence to link him to the deaths of Heidi Manilk, Mary Hines, an unidentified homeless man, Stephanie Britton and Christopher Martin, Frank Goodman, Sarah Rodmel, and Ivy Davies. Mackay was also determined to be the culprit in the mugging and theft spree in Chelsea and Kensington. However, however, Mackay denied confessing to all but four murders, Griffith, Price, Crean and the homeless man. There was insufficient evidence to charge him with more than five murders. The homeless victim was never identified. At his trial in November 1975, Mackay was convicted of the manslaughter of Adele Price, Isabella Griffith, and Anthony Crean after pleading guilty on the grounds of diminished responsibility. More evidence of his involvement in Goodman's death was found but it wasn't enough to convict him, so the case was left to lie on file. He was sentenced to life with a minimum of 20 years. Although his defense had pleaded insanity, medical experts concluded that he was a psychopath. Well, duh. Mackay's minimum term was 20 years, meaning that he became eligible for release in 1995. He had been repeatedly denied full release by the parole board. In 2017, he was permitted to move into an open prison with day release provisions. In 2019, Dartford MP Gareth Johnson voiced concern at the potential release release of Mackay, raising the issue in Parliament and writing to the Secretary of State for Justice. In 2020, Mackay was again considered for release. The hearing of the parole board was postponed amidst a fresh investigation into Mackay's involvement in the murders to which he was suspected. In May 2021, the parole board announced that he wouldn't be eligible for release but could remain in open prison conditions. In 2022, it was revealed that Mackay's case had once again been referred to the parole board. The son of Ivy Davies said that he was outraged by this announcement but was unable to to give an account to the parole board of the impact of Mackay's crimes, as Mackay was not convicted of her murder. Everyone knows he did more. He hasn't shown any remorse, but there's not a lot that I can do about it, he said. Mackay has been imprisoned for 49 years as of 2024, and hopefully he don't get out. Just seeing the evolution of his character, like you could kind of tell that he was a ticking time bomb. Like, this is a kid who, dealing with the death of his father, who is violent towards other people, who is torturing animals, who is physically assaulting his mothers and his sisters, someone who at 15 years old, the psychiatrist knew that he would be a guy who killed, he would be a killer. Like he knew that he would be a killer. This was just the ticking time bomb and just the brutality of what he did though. Like throwing a girl off the train, hitting a guy with an ax, like killing a four-year-old boy, like a four-year-old boy. It's just ridiculous. And and it wasn't even, he just wanted to do it. It was, it was no like sexual gratification. There was no, nothing to do. He just wanted to kill people. He just wanted to hurt people. And to be honest, 
I hope that he never gets released. Because you can't let somebody like this back out on the street. Oh, he, you're like, oh, he's only, he'll, he'll be 70 some when he gets out. What does that matter? Keep this man in jail. But uh, that's all I have to say. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this story. I appreciate all the support that I've been getting on this channel. But uh, thank you so much. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on my post notifications if you haven't already. But I hope you have a great day. I'm out. Peace.